Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, you saw in the last update, layout update video, I put the scenics in up there, and I'm quite satisfied with the way that's turned out. And, you know, so for the moment, I might, I might add the odd little bit here and there, like I've said, like the odd tree, maybe on this bank, sort of around this area, that sort of thing, but it won't be anything really significant. Okay, um, regarding any track um, accessory stuff like cabling, um, trunking, that sort of thing, I'm not going to put any of that up there, but there will be a bit down this side, obviously, because if there's going to signal going to go in there, there's obviously points here, they will all need to be managed as well. So there will be some um, trunking and line side equipment going along uh, down there, relay boxes, that sort of thing. But now I'm going to start turning my attention to the shed. Now, the first part of that is to start thinking about putting in the hard standing for this area here. So I'm going to be using my standard two millimetre grey board and I'm going to build it up in layers. So I'm obviously going to put in a bottom layer, which is just going to be a rough fit because there's obviously going to be more layers on the top. So it doesn't have to be an exact fit as long as it looks reasonable at the edges and there's no big sort of under gap under gaps if you like so you can't see bits going underneath that should be all right now one thing i have noticed is to get those tracks in i've got a slightly bigger gap it's not quite in the same distance so this side here the gap is narrower than that side and you know that's fine i really don't mind that whatsoever all it will mean is that the doors are adjusted at that end, okay? So that really doesn't make the slightest jot of difference to me. Um, they're more central at this end, all right? I think it was quite important to put the tracks where they needed to go because as you can see, um, I had that curve to negotiate. And if I tried to strain that curve and get it to come in, some of the big, bigger trains, like the Pendolinos, for example, probably would have just tripped over all of that. And it's just not worth the hassle, to be honest with you. I'd rather go where the track needs to be than me trying to force the track into where I want it to go, if you understand where I'm coming from. So that little compromise of having the doors slightly towards that side at that end is really not an issue. And besides, who's going to see it? I mean, yes, I will put the, the automatic doors in at that end. And yes, I will scenic up at that end. And I'm, I may even put the odd camera if I can get it in at that end. But to be honest, it's going to be such a rare occurrence because it's such a pain getting up there. You can see I'd have to lean right over New Mills to get there. And I'd rather just film trains coming up the ramp or maybe coming along the side of the shed here, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's unlikely I'm going to film up there, to be quite frank with you, but you never know. So that's what's going to happen at that far end, um, but you will see the doors certainly at this end. All right, so anyway, I'm going to get, I'm going to cut this um, to accommodate that, and I'm going to cut it, if I take you in over the top, so it fits over this edge exactly, and then the bottom layer, it doesn't matter if it's not touching the outside of the sleepers. As long as it's nearly there, then that's absolutely fine. All right, so I'm going to get that cut. I'm going to measure it and then cut the board and then fit it in bit by bit. Speak to you in a minute. All right, there we are. That's the bottom layer of the hard standing in all the way to the end. Now, I've just got a couple of scraps of the two mil grey board from that. And if I place that on top there, you can see that brings us just above the sleeper height. Now I've got another piece here. Let's put that on the top. And clearly that's taking us far too high. So that tells me now that I've probably got another piece of um, Two mil, two mil layer to put down and possibly a one mil layer, but I will check that out when we get a bit nearer the time. So I now know that two mil is, or six mil from the base is far too much. So what I'm gonna do now is 
get the next layer on right up to the edge of the sleepers as far as possible. I'm not worried if it's not quite exactly touching, but at the end of the day, I want it as close to those sleepers as what I, as what I can. Now, what I might do to try and ensure a better fit, um, because the, the track isn't perfectly straight, so what I am going to do is cut the pieces into smaller sections and then it'd be easier to fit each one one at a time and do it that way. Obviously, if you've got your track dead straight, then obviously you can just cut longer strips and just lay them in. Um, that went on beautifully. Um, there's no issues with that whatsoever. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do it in pieces and just to make sure that everything just fits well. All right, I'll catch you in a bit when all that's in. All right, there you can see that's the second layer of the hard standing in all the way up. And that's all fixed down, as you can see. Now, you might also notice that I've painted the sides of the rails. So another exciting bit coming now, I need to clean the top of the rails. And I did this here and just uh, mucked up the previous video. So I've had to do it again. But uh, yes, an exciting bit. There you go. You're loving that, aren't you? I can tell. Anyway, that's enough of that. I will get all of that um, completely cleaned and then vacuumed. It's very important you vacuum that because these do tend to leave residue everywhere and you don't want that inside your locomotives. So I'll come back to you shortly once I've done that and we'll then start talking about the top layer and then the uh, what I'm going to do to the actual surface. Okay. Right, just thought I'd show you before moving on that trains are running properly again so obviously they've got a little 153 obviously approaching the lift now now please bear in mind i am running this through for track testing purposes as i said in the last video trains won't be running through the shed and then out again all right right on to the top level now now, I don't actually have any thin card, but what I do have are these, obviously old cereal packets, okay? So I've literally just cut off one of the lips from the side of the packet there and placing that up against the track. Now, hopefully you'll be able to get in and see that it is ever so slightly below the top surface. So you can see, because I painted the side of the rails, you can see there is a very thin slither of a line just below the shiny top surface. Now, for me, that is absolutely fine. Um, it's The whole point of this is to give the illusion it does go to the top. And there would be a tiny, tiny gap right up against the rail. The concrete, in reality, wouldn't be touching the rail there would be a tiny gap, however small that may be. And that little black, that little line there, as I've showed you, just there below the shiny silver rail would be enough to indicate that there is a gap. It's an illusion. So I'm happy with that. And obviously it needs to be slightly below the surface because when I come to use the track rubber, then it will glide over the top of the rail and not try and take the top surface of my hard standing away because I do want to use, um, well, I am going to paint the surface, to be honest. I'm going to split it down into little sections and then paint the top surface. All right, so I'm going to now cut this into widths of 50 millimeters and I'm going to have that one, say that's 50 millimeters, which is probably not far off. That will go there. There'll be a smaller gap at that end and whatever at the other end. All right. And then there'll be gaps, 50 millimetres marked along all the way along. 50 millimetre strips placed individually all the way along. And then I will come to think about painting that afterwards and weathering it up. All right. I'll speak in a minute. Right. This is taken, taking quite a while. But you can see now... They're all done at 50 millimetre sections. 
So obviously complete, or the fitting of it anyway, up to that point there. So I'm, I'm laying down larger strips, having to measure each of the sections, seven millimeters between the, between the tracks. Uh, you can't really go any more than that because you'll need to get the flanges of the wheels in and it is always a little bit tricky in end gauge. So yeah, like I said, big, uh, large pieces on the bottom and then 50 millimeter pieces, 50 millimeter wide sections for each of the rest. And I'll just, when, the, when that train's gone past, I'll just lower the lift, um, not much, but just so you can get a frimp favor of what that's gonna look like. Just letting that uh, 153 pass, and there we go. So just a quick down. See, you, it's deceptive, isn't it? So I'm quite pleased with that joint now. You can barely see it's there. And the same at the other end as well, which will be done a bit later on in the week now. I've been doing this all day, um, apart from filming all the um, uh, subscriber videos, of course, the, the competition videos. Um, but uh, yeah, at least all that's sorted out as well now. So thanks, thanks to all those people who participated in that. Uh, but anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a break now, have a cup of tea, and I'll catch you again tomorrow. Um, I mean, that will be a few seconds time for you. All right, speak soon. Welcome back. Now this is several days later and it's taken a very long time to get to this stage. We're not finished yet. So you can see I've got all the hard standing in up to this point and the lower level obviously there. Still need to do the inside of the tracks all the way up to there. That's where it is, and there on that side. So still a little way to go, but a little bit closer. But I'm going to crack on with that and hopefully get that done by the weekend. All right, I'll catch you soon. Tis done. It's taken ages to do that. As you can appreciate, each each of these pieces is a separate piece, and. You might remember from the previous clips that the track bed in the middle was lower. Um, I wasn't sure if I, because obviously the sleepers are at a slightly different height in the middle. So I thought I'd try it and the track rubber goes over the top, no problem. So that does look an awful lot better than it did. So I'm really pleased about that. Now, all that remains now is for that to dry and go off and then I'm going to paint it up but that's going to be in a separate video for painting now because I've I've spent such a long time doing this um, and if I paint it as well it's going to make this video longer than it should be so I'll cut my losses on this one now and um, I'll do another week, a video over the weekend so I'll get this painted up it's Friday night now so I'll get this painted up tomorrow and post another video either late Saturday or early Sunday morning, we'll see. Anyway, just before I wrap this video up, um, I just want to thank Kev at Medway Peninsula Model Railway. Um, he, I won his competition, and so thank you so much, Kevin. Um, this um, mini, this um, 60 years anniversary mini, now it is a little bit bigger than the planned double O layout that I've got in mind. Um, some of you may not be aware of that. I'm planning a, um, a shunting layout in double O gauge, but that won't even begin to appear before before Christmas. Um, maybe even be way, way afterwards. So I'll just mention it to you, but don't expect it to be around the corner. It's certainly not. So I'm just gathering odd little bits. I'm going to shows and picking up like a three, five pound wagon that sort of thing um, and then I'm going to turn it into a game but so anyway this will be brilliant too for a little display model so thank you so much Kevin and um, I really appreciate that all right so if you do if you do fancy that um, popping across to Kevin's channel is uh, is in the very very early throes of putting the layout together he's gone through the planning stage and he's showed the track plan and uh, I think he's put some track down now which we're waiting to see 
So hopefully that there'll be a video for that. I will leave a link to his channel in the description below. So do pop across, give him a sub and uh, tell him I sent you. Right, um, just testing the track um, just before I go um, and found that this locomotive here, this class 37 with the structure gauging train was stopping when it was going along this line and stopping about here. And the reason for that is because the center of this, this part here was catching these little, um, and they're not domey bits, but you know what I mean. These little bits going over each of the wheels and it's causing the locomotive just to rise up even just a fraction of a millimeter and causing it to lose contact. So what I had to do was I took the back of a screwdriver like that and I gently ran it up and down the rails, just pressing each of these parts down and just making sure that everything was below the surface. And then also um, with the edge of the handle, just pressing down each of the two sides and the edges because obviously that one would have done the middle and just make sure that the edges are nicely firm as well. Okay. Um, the other thing, and it's only happened in one place where if I take you over the top, it's all sorted now, but the gap between the rail and the thing was just catching. So I took a needle file and just gently pulled back. I didn't push because you could actually dislodge something. So just by gently pulling back over each of the rails until you've got a decent, sufficient clearance. And it's a case of just chest tech, just testing with a train. So um, hence my using of the structure gauging train, which I thought was pretty good um, train to use in this instance. So on the closing shots, you'll see this train just running off and uh, well, I hope you enjoy. Anyway, so I am going now and I'll just set this off in motion and I'll finish the video with that. All right, anyway, take care everybody. See you soon. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please do like subscribe and share not forgetting to click on that little bell to get regular notifications of any videos i upload some other videos are appearing on the screen right now which also might take your interest thanks once again and bye for now